Great pass from Diamantidis. The lob is done! Here we go, 40 minutes to a title. David Blue for three. On the mark, David Blue! Now Spinellas drives inside. Look for the alley off! Corey Higgins just exploding! EuroLeague Sweet 16. Exactly what you need. As ever, we are up on SoundCloud and we are, of course, uh, on wherever you get good podcasts. So be sure to search for EuroLeague Sweet 16 to subscribe and get the episodes as soon as they drop. Hello and welcome to EuroLeague Sweet 16. It is a new season. There is actually a new season upon us. Yes, this is uh, David Hine, of course. And as you can see, this year, we're going lights on again. And <laughs> we promise it's going to be good. It's going to be very good. Uh, we're not going to talk about what we're going to do, uh, you know, about the, the upcoming season. What we are going to talk about is a lot of basketball today. And uh, just to get you guys ready, uh, you know, essentially to, well, this upcoming season. So first of all, Dave, how you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, summer's over, I think. Uh, when you start talking about the season starting up, you have to say the summer is over and Fall is slowly upon us, and uh, looking forward to to these games, man. It's a lot of movement, a lot of uh, stuff going on, and uh, yeah, it's uh, I think uh, some changes as well, and so it's going to be pretty uh, pretty cool season, I think. And you know, we're talking about a cool season, but uh, we we didn't have a cool summer. It was somewhat a very hot summer. And the place where I'm going with this, as uh, you know, we're going to have somewhat of a discussion here about. Was it really, um, was it really an NBA Euroleague invasion kind of thing, Dave? Uh, you know, originally I would have said uh, invasion is probably a little bit strong of a word, uh, but but then uh, kind of looked at it again, and uh, you you do have like a good five, you know, six pretty good sized names uh, that uh, that made the jump. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think you can, uh, I think you can call it a, an invasion, you know, it's at least a, a, a pretty, a pretty strong attack. So, I mean, for me anyways, uh, the reason I brought it up as an, uh, an invasion kind of thing was when you look at, when you look at it, right. Uh, we're seeing Sasha Vesnikov going to the NBA. We're seeing Vasa Misic. Going to the NBA, uh, Dante Exum going back to the NBA. Now we're talking; these are some heavy losses. On the other hand, the old continent, like you know, we we got Kaminsky, we got. Now I know, I know. What do you think about it? Well, we got those here, right? Sergi Baca. Really, Wancho. I mean, can you say that? Wancho perhaps- Ibaka. Hernan, uh, Willie, both Hernan goes. Yeah, Bo Cruz, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> come on, it w- it was called for. Yes. So, I have a question for you. Like, would you agree, perhaps, that this is I have a question for you. Like, would you agree, perhaps, that this is a bigger loss to your league than it is in terms of the NBA? I mean, we we got also Kemba Walker. When you think about it, but and Jabari Parker, Walker and Parker, how bad? Uh, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think the NBA is going to miss any of these guys. I mean, okay. You know what I mean? You know, they, they have, there's so many guys there and everybody wants to go there that a a few of them, let's say coming over here is not going to make that big of a difference to the NBA. It's, it it is a, it is a, a bigger get for the EuroLeague to have these guys come in and, you know, some of them are are pretty big names. I mean, the Europeans who come back, who who let's say come back, you know, in my eyes, they they might mean a little bit less, you know, but you know, it's still um, it's still uh, um, a pretty pretty good get for Euroleague. So obviously, uh, me hitting the mute button. You know, this is obviously a very low budget production but we're hoping for it to be um for this season anyways to be very uh you know even i'd say more interesting than the one before i don't know even if that's possible with the way things ended last year 
but really um to me it was more of a first of all a surprise because obviously you know walker and parker these are like huge names Sergi baka that's a huge name but and i would say putting things into the right perspective i can't really say it's an invasion in a way you know i thought it real good because at the beginning i was very very supportive of saying it is but you look at the level of talent it's not like you had six sasha vesnikov right we have one. He gone. Vasa Misic, big body guard, great court vision, can shoot the ball pretty damn well. Facilitate. How many of those we got? Uno. Exactly. Which is why I would I would claim, you know, I would say I would I would try and make a point that like the level of talent that your league lost. I mean, you know, players come, players go, but it's not like, you know, you had six, seven guys in line ready to inherit their places so that the level of the, the competition would go even higher. I mean, granted, can you really say the last season wasn't as competitive as it ever was? No. It was a, we legit had an amazing season. Um, and speaking of last season... And the summer we had, we had quite the interesting moves. I mean, yeah, some we we mentioned, you know, with the NBA uh, EuroLeague invasion kind of thing. But you know, I gotta ask you, what were your type uh, top five hottest stories of the summer, and why? You want me to do all five? Oh, we don't have to. You know, to, to to be honest, okay. I mean, don't and I I wouldn't say this is me being a homer, um, but for those who, who might not know, I live in Germany. Uh, but uh, I I think Bayern bringing in Lasso is a major deal. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a massive step up as far as coaching goes, and also you know giving them a chance to giving those young players a chance, which is also something Bayern need to do long-term is to let their young players get a chance to play. And that's something that Lasso always did. And to have such an established, you know, reputable, hugely successful name coming in and taking charge of that program. Um, and and then you see also the guys that they get, you know, Bomaro and you get, you know, Ibaka um, and, uh, and, you know, Booker comes back and stuff like that, you know, it's definitely up there. I don't know if it's the the top story. I I, I think you, I think you probably your top story is probably Panathinaikos and the overhaul there with with uh, Ataman coming in and you know all the guys that he's brought in and you know and and you know and also them you know stealing Slukas from Olympiakos. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I mean seriously, yeah, uh, you're right about Panathinaikos because essentially you could have used each and every one of their signings, right? As one of the hottest stories of the summer. Yeah, yeah. I will be provocative in a way and say that Slukas making that move, like, is it big? Yes. Is it crazy big? I'm not sure. That's not it's like taking a... away it's taking away a, a, a big piece of one of your arch rivals as well. No, no. That's, of... that's one of the things as well. So no doubt. No doubt. I'm completely on board with you on that. But yeah. if you would, if I would were to ask you, let's compare V Span, right? Hill Bill moving from Panathinaikos to Olympiakos and Slukas going, you know, doing the uh, exact opposite route. And again, that's not the first time we saw guys going from Olympiakos to, um, to Panathinaikos. Ahem, <clears throat> Giannis Papapetru. We see you. Well, how, so, how how old was how old was Spinulis when he did that? Ooh, you know, you know what? I'm going to ask you to check it right right now. But he I mean, came because that's I think a difference because you know I I don't know, but Spinulis was I would imagine younger, a little bit, right? A little bit younger. And, yes, and, and so that's why, you know, I I and I totally agree with you, but um, I I still think it is I th I still think it is you take somebody away. No, it it is, and the thing is when you think about what Lucas is bringing to the table, right? 
you can say it's somewhat irreplaceable. It 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 brings back the you know what we talked about just what three minutes ago, three and a half minutes ago, saying that the talent is irreplaceable because it's not like we have in line, you know, if we had in line 15 top guards, right, that can dominate on any given night, then I mean, probably you would need to shed not just sweat and tears, but also blood to win the competition. Metaphorical blood, by the way, don't get me wrong. E even though last year it seemed like we were close to it. <laughs> to not being, uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, so you know what I mean? It's like. It look, we, so it's, it looks like he was 28 and Lucas is 33. Which Five, five which years. Big, that, that, yeah, exactly. Big difference. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm not trying to take away anything of that move because that move essentially, again, because Lucas still was the man for Olympiacos. Yes, they had Thomas Walkup, who I love. You know, he's a great player. He's a great piece. He's not a Lucas. And now he needs to take a, even a bigger role. And I would argue that maybe also the same with uh, Nigel Williams-Goss. He's going to have to take a bigger role than the one he, pre he had in his previous stint with Olympiacos. But is Slukas that big of, you know, not necessarily. I would say that Lasso, you're right. That, it, does that is give them, it, it does give them a leadership that, that, that you do need to, in order to win, you know, big games. You know, he's obviously proven that he, you know, can take big shots and everything like that. And, and you know, it, it, in that regard, it is also a help, uh, you know, to have a veteran guy um, to kind of, you know, show that because this is a new program, you know, it's there's so many, you know, moving pieces that that also have to be, you know, OK, who's the who's going to be the guy at the end? And, you know, until somebody maybe, you know, crystallizes, you know, he can he can also take over at the end of games like that. So. So are we ready to discuss? Are we, are we ready to do it really like discuss the sure. legacy of Wherever Kill Bill? Where are going to go? It's fine with me. <laughs> no, no. Are we going really to discuss the legacy of of Kill Bill? And Slukas? No. Compare no, the two? Sorry. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think that's what we need to do today. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm, do that I'm not maybe saying. Maybe another day. But... Maybe, but that's not what we're going to do right now. No, okay, this so... is the preview of the 23-24 of the season. Fair enough. Let's keep motor on, motoring on to that one. So, okay, you talked about one coaching change that happened during the summer, one that, well, at least, you know, Andrea Trinchieri being on the exit door wasn't really news because – you know, it was perhaps one of the most worst cap secrets, I'd say, that, you know, Trinka is going elsewhere. But eventually we do know that uh, Real Madrid won the championship. Kudos, Chus, uh, and kudos to Byron that got an amazing, amazing coach uh, with Pablo Lasso. So, but we, we did had another coaching change not that long ago. And I'm talking one that took place in Italy. Yeah. I would I would argue that this is perhaps also a big story. As much as by the way, Lassi Tovi going to Virtus as well. This is a coach. mega reinforcement. Yeah. Guy, this is a coach to not only pay attention to, but to be mesmerized by his his knowledge, the way that he did stuff with the Finnish national team. Um Strasbourg also, too. Strasbourg too. Yeah, true, true. I mean, to me, you know, it it, it goes, it, it's not a secret. I mean, to me, it's uh, it's Lassi. It's uh, also, of course, Igor Milicic, who's now in Italy. Um, you know, you have those coaches that are on the rise, right? And to me, you know, you have the Paris basketball coach, the new one, of course. You mean uh, the leader of Team Bonn that that uh, fled Germany to go to? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean the the Thomas uh, Isola the finish? French ver yeah French Bonn. His brother's a coach too. His brother was assistant coach, and his brother's his second year at Heidelberg. Isolo's brother. Oh, for sure. I mean, listen. But okay, we'll we'll get to his brother. No, we don't need to get to the brother. No, I'm saying I'm I'm obviously I'm just, you know, we kind of sidetracked here. Uh so let's talk for a sec about like really what do you make of this story? Not not just Virtus letting Sergio Scariolo go, but also I mean, 
Luka Banki's back. Yeah, I mean, you saw what he did at the, at the with, World Cup. And with vengeance, might I add. Yeah, well, I mean, he was, he was, the, they, they were the, they had the best record in the, in the European qualifiers. They lost, they lost their first game and then they, they won their next 11 games. And I, I, I want to say, I want to say they only lost the, the, the one game was to, to uh, Serbia, I want to say, and it was something like 101 to 100 or something like that. And, you know, you saw the amazing performance that they had at the World Cup. And, and uh, you know, it was the first time that they ever reached the World Cup. And um, and he was originally turning down offers and stuff like that, you know. And so, and, and then when he and then when he took over, uh, when he took over at um, uh, at Virtus, I was like, OK, sure. Why not? You know, I mean, you know, he. he um, yeah, it's fair. I. I I feel bad for Scariola. Um, you know, I, I I I don't really I didn't really look into you know I'm not really a sensational guy, so I don't really care, you know, um about like details and stuff like that, about what happened and stuff like but you know, to 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 go into a season that, you know, you know, just that short of the season start of the season and then to to be kind of uh um you know kicked out, it's uh yeah, not ideal and I mean you know, there's 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 a lot of talent there. They're bringing in a lot of uh, you know interesting guys. They had they had a lot of uh, interesting guys there already. They were you know kind of ravished by injuries last season, and uh, so you know this uh, this will this will be a much better team, uh, Virtus team this season, uh, regardless. You know, even if Scariola would have been there, um, and so now it's just going to be interesting to see, you know, um, you know what 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 Bonke is going to be able to do there. So first of all, by the way, we, we were discussing uh, Tommaso Isalo just a second ago, just to be a, uh, you know, um, also a great guy. You know, you reach a goal, Matt. I mean, some great, great names on the on the rise. And how is it we didn't bring up uh, Dusan Olimplievich? It is beyond me. Yaka yeah. Lakovic. I mean, Dave, we got yeah, some yeah. serious heat I coming mean, up. You know, these are these are some of the the next great uh, coaches that are going to be you know taking over your league team soon. You know, yeah, but you know, I like Luka Banki, really, I do. I like him very much. Uh, and re- as this is like the season opening special episode, it will be longer than the usual regular season episode. So. We're not going to talk about what do we think of this Virtus version in comparison to the last one. All I'm going to say is that I'm happy to see Coach Banke back in the EuroLeague. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I make of this entire story about, you know, uh, parting ways with Coach Scariolo and how it all happened? Could have, it could have, uh, could have been done differently. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. And I'm going to surprise you. I don't think that uh, the Nikola Mirotic saga hit my top five stories of the summer. Nah, I I didn't even write them down. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even write them down. Right. Everybody knew he was leaving. Um, you know, you know okay. what? It's it wasn't the leaving part as it was the unilateral where he was where he was going to go and how much money you know and yeah, and I how mean, much money they it, would it, have. Uh, whatever team he went to so for me it was more the unilateral contract termination of how it all unfolded in a way to me that was a bigger story than him leaving and maybe him going to the uh uh going essentially to a different team because like you said it was a well-known thing i mean so for you was lasso for me was bunky coming back to the euro league and um Another big story that I didn't think well, Adam I... was a new coach too, new hire. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, but you know what? You know what? Yeah, it's a big story. It is, and we're that's gonna have two to time. Just... That's a two time rate. You know, you know, they won two in a row, and basically, you know, you know, uh, you know, just barely missed four. You know, it's a and, huge story, I mean, huge story. You know why? Yeah. Because to me, we're talking. Okay, first of all, yeah, I won the cup. Um, it, not just because of that, actually, it's because of the simple fact: where were Panathinaikos in the past? What four, five, six years? Yeah, where they went through coaches, tried figuring out, and and some of those guys that they brought in, you're like, 
it's never going to work there, you know, but, but Adaman is, is, is such a, oh, how would you want to say it? It's just, um, he's such a huge personality that he, um, that he'll, that he'll, he'll, he'll fit into that. Let's, let's call it madness. I think Panathinaikos fans wouldn't be, have a problem with saying it's madness there, you know? So, yeah. You know, but he's but he's crazy enough to fit in there, and 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 you know he's brash enough to 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 fit in there. So, listen, this project is crazy, in a, in, in a good way. It can yeah. it can end um, only, only in well, both ways. Either it's a tremendous success, or it's a colossal failure. In a way, uh, what I really think of it. I'm going to give you a word, one word that's going to change everything here. You ready? Time. Time. Just give them time. Because this roster, as talented as it is, and it's extremely talented, uh, this project, as new as it is, and it is as new as it can get, it needs time. Maybe, maybe it'll click from the first moment and that will be a Cinderella story. We've seen we've seen such things happen, but more often than not, this is not the case. So patience is key for Panathinaikos. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. And do they have the patience? Exactly. This will be what eventually determines this season for them. Will they have the patience or not? Because they spent money, right? Like the Spanulis. You know, era in Panathon, like the Jellico era in Panathon, was the way it seems anyways, you know? So they they got to be big spenders in a lot of ways. So the only thing that they need is time and patience. Now I know you thought I'm going to be provocative, but I wasn't. This is all I'm saying for Panathon fans. You all need to be patient. That's it. Management, patience. Patience is key. Well, management more than again like i'm saying that's exactly what i'm saying everyone needs to be patient you know what look at maccabi right it took them you cannot say that they they're not climbing up in recent years right you cannot say that and unless for you know unless it was for i mean the management they were very 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 patient in recent years and while you allow guys to work and do their thing right or why you don't because some teams these are pressurized environments like no others so you need to you know you need to have those guys that know how to deflect that pressure you know to keep the guys away so that they can perform and in other cases you just need to you know sit on your ass and just be, you know, be patient because that's all they need. They got the guys. Like it or not. But in for sure. For sure, for, for sure, you know. And, 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 and you said, it'll, you know, it could be a colossal. I don't think it'll be. I don't, no, I'm I don't, saying I, this. I, I'm, I'm saying that it will be looked upon either because of the names, because of the money, because of everything. Yeah, if you're going to get to a losing streak, if you're going to, you know, if it's not going to hit this fast and it's not going to click this fast then it's going to be considered as which is why i said guys don't look at it this way patience is key and it makes sense you know their first names again we'll be talking about that in the second part of the show <laughs> i will tell you that this much so okay not meritage obviously uh was there any signing not coming from the NBA, that you're like, oh God, this is exactly what this team needed, and it I'll was. Let you, I'll let you go first. No, no, I'm I'm legit asking because it's interesting. Uh... I mean, you want to go first? <laughs> Take it first. <laughs> Uh, not not coming from the NBA. Uh, bum, bum, bum. let's see. Uh, great, 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 uh, great podcasting here. Uh, kind of just looking through through the through the teams. Um, 
Shall we say, okay, shall we, shall we do have this? somebody give it to them? No, I'm not, I, I don't have anyone actually. What, what what I do have is this. It's a message to all your early coaches that are starting this season on, on you know, a EuroLeague team bench. Um, feel not pressure as the heat is on and the list of yearly coaches waiting, waiting for the first, right? I mean, come on, let's be honest. There's probably going to be a few vacancies every now and then. It happens. It's the business. But just think of the list of names of guys currently not coaching and that and they got like crazy, crazy early experience. And I'm, I'm not saying, oh, they coach regular season. No, they 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 made it to the early playoffs in a new format. They made it to game five. They made it to the final four. Heck, they even, you know, they even won a cup. Maybe some of them. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, there are there are some some massive coaches out there. You wanted a guy who who uh, I I I I've loved him since he was actually in the basketball champions league. Darius Thompson going to FS. You know, having him team up with um, with Larkin um, and you know I I I think that's going to be you know so much fun. He could he can play also uh, off the ball. He can let, uh, you know, Larkin do some things like that. He can also set up Larkin a lot uh, as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've always, I've always enjoyed Thompson. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm happy that, uh, you know, going to a, a, you know, a bigger name um, and a bigger team going from Basconia to FS. So I'll, I'll go with, I'll go with Darius Thompson. This was probably a very uh, high-profile move, uh, especially because of the way it happened. As there was a buyout for this player, rightfully so. I mean, come on, he had an rightfully amazing so. season. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully so. I mean, he had an amazing season. Stand out. He's he was a Euroleague rook last year. Mm-hmm. True, his team didn't make it to the to the playoffs, but by God, it was so much fun watching. You know, the offense of Basconia, the way that it was, the way that Coach Penaroya ran it was amazing. And having such a point guard and see how it changed and how it affected um, Mike Kotzer, right? That was an amazing combo with these two. And when you had like a mega shooter like Marcus Howard next to him, it felt like, you know, every piece fell into place. And with him moving to... um to uh, Anadolu Efes this summer, I can't help but wonder uh, how much Ante Zizic is going to enjoy him. Tibor plays how much he's going to enjoy him. I mean, the connection with uh, with Tyreek Jones, Jones, of course. And then you have Larkin. Then you have Shane Larkin. Arguably, yeah. and maybe not arguably, you know, one of the top three guards in the competition. Maybe not last year, okay? Because he had... He had some issues with, you know, during the season with injuries. But if you're willing to make that mistake, right, and think that Larkin will not whoop your ass at any given moment, just, you know. As long as he's healthy, he yes. will do it. But, but, but that's the healthy. thing. That's true to, to every professional athlete. As long as they're healthy, you know, and the situation is right. And we do know that the situation for Larkin in Anadolu FS has been amazing so far. Um, you know, relatively speaking, also a new coach. Also, talking about all teams and new coaches too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, to me, it it could be considered as a uh, as a good story, a very good story. But, and there is a big one here. Um, I would claim, seriously, why why should I claim? I'll I'll just put it in the open, right? Um, the um, very, uh, very, relatively speaking, slow summer of Real Madrid. You know what I mean? Only making one signing, and what three, four guys were let go. Adam Hanga. Four, yeah. 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 So Adam Hanga leaving to me, that's a big thing. 
Uh, you can say, ah, he's not like in his early 30s anymore. Like he's what, 34 around that uh, area, around that age. Maybe still, that is a crazy glue guy. And there's no more Randolph. You can say, okay, he played. Yeah, but a veteran. That's one less veteran. Uh, Nigel Williams Goss, Olympiacos. And, uh, but then. They bring back Faku Campasso. Again, one of the worst kept secrets, I would say, in the in the competition. And on top of all of that, if you'd go to last year's roster, right? There is only essentially, well, say you registered 12 players to each game, right? 11 played there last season, last year. They released four guys, and still you have 11 guys that will be registered every game that played last season. Now, that to me, is a huge deal. And I'm not going to talk about ages and, and you know, whatever. I'm just saying. Well, think, I mean, like, because we were talking about before, like Panathinaikos, you know, where you have basically an entire uh, entire new team, you know, whereas this team is just like, you know, you bring in a guy who's, okay, here you go. You can shoot. You can shoot. Ah, okay, we need a basket. I'll, I'll take it, you know. And, um, and uh, great energy and everything like that, you know, and, you know. Your only question mark is a little bit, you know, the age, uh, you know, the the three Spanish guys. But yeah, but you know. but again, we'll be talking about that in the second part of the season opening special. Uh, I mean, how many stories have we been, you know, we gone through so far? The coaches that are waiting, Madrid summer or you know lack of summer moves, which is all you know what it's always great, but we'll discuss whether it was a very good thing in the next part. Um, you had Lasso and Banki. Oddly enough, not planning it, forty percent of our story so far has been have been coaches, you know, coaching related. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, that, that, I don't know. That's we keep talking about coaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, um, what else did we have? When you think about it, Slukas. Why is it a big, a big move? Panathinaikos. So, yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, another big story, and this should be the last one, is with the season we had last year. And this was as intense as it could have been. And I'm not even talking about the brawls we had in, you know, in game two between Madrid and, um, and Partizan. I'm not talking about uh, the Maccabi Monaco series, which also delivered, um, or the fact that now we have Shara Sianis and you know Trinka, not coaching a Euroleague team. That sounds a bit, in, you know, that is not a world I want to be in. Uh, maybe a potential ex uh, expansion we should be discussing could be a big story, uh, but that is not the thing. I'm just saying, we about to have a Euroleague season. After the last one set an incredibly high level of ex expectations towards this one, can it live it up? Yes or no? Uh, I mean, for for me, kind of um, to think about what they did, and you know, I'll get to that to to who they is and who they are in a second. But to look, to think about what they did last year, um, and the excitement that they brought, and and everything else, and I'm, I'm going to give you a number, 16,124 season tickets for Partizan. 16,000 season ticket holders already. Uh, that's just insane. And um, so they're going to be, you know, that much better. All those guys, uh, they kept most of their core there as well. Um, so you have all these other teams that we've talked about um and and you know partisan is just going to be that much better than they were last year and so yeah i mean i i think this is going to be a great season i i really do um it's it's any season you know you look at last season any season is going to be hard to compare to that uh but it definitely has a chance to you, you know one thing that we we really haven't talked about and and I guess it's not super high on the on the sexy factor um 
but I think it's a huge deal is the is the format change, you know, whereas you have, you know, the top six teams, only the top six teams getting direct qualification into the playoffs. And then you have the play-ins for, for seven to 10. You know, I mean, think about how much we were talking about last season, you know, who's going to make the eight spot? Who's going to make the eight spot? Who's going to make the eight spot? And 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 now we're like, who's going to make the 10 spot? You know, I mean, how, how much longer is the, is the, is the, 14th team in the standings going to still be in the race for the playoffs. You know, I mean, I, I think it's a huge deal. I think it, it brings everybody, uh, it brings that many more teams, uh, keeps them involved that much longer, which adds for that much more drama in all of the games. And one more thing, and then I'll let you go is we talked a lot last year about tiebreakers and stuff like that, you know, and that's going to be the same thing in this. one. Well, you're, are you really sure that that's the reason why your league did that? When would that form a change? Because I'm I'm somehow why do you really, think they did it then? Because I'm I'm ambivalent about it actually. I'm I'm trying to figure out whether the the main reason was to uh, to help us achieve a higher percentage in terms of success rate predicting which team is going to make it, or they're trying to to off me in terms of. Because I have this uh, thing that every year I try to start and calculate, you know, what each team needs to do in order to make it in terms yeah. of the tiebreakers. <laughs> so adding yeah. like, you know what I mean? Adding two two more teams into the mix, having like at least four more still fighting for those two additional spots would probably kill us all. So I'm trying to really figure out which one is it. But putting all kiddings aside and... Yo, you're a league HQ. I know you want us to, you know, have a bigger success rate. I know this is the reason, uh, but it's it's a great thing. It really went under the under the radar in terms of the hottest stories of the summer. But maybe Chin have, you know, the coaching for itself was good. The the some of the roster movements were great. The NBA Euro League invasion or non invasion also good. But just think of what it adds what added value it has not only to the competition but to the fans to everything it's like it's a win-win situation almost on any front like really think think about it it's it's i mean how many rounds did we have to wait to just know last year the the final seeding i'm not saying like you know how how long was the how long was the fourteenth team who ended up being fourteenth in the standings? How Ooh, long I don't were they know. Still that, in that, that, that's a great question. But I you will say I, mean? I, I I will say this. I do believe there was a scenario, maybe in the thirty third or the thirty fourth round. Yeah. <laughs> that that the eighth spot could still somehow end up being outside the the top eight. Yeah. Now, okay. Granted, we did have a year where. There was a fight right up until the thirtieth uh, round of the season when we had the you know the um, sixteen teams format, which is essentially why this show is named Euroleague Sweet Sixteen because at the beginning of the format we had sixteen, now we have eighteen, and who knows, maybe soon, God willingly, we'll have another expansion, and then for sure, none of us will get a shot eye at any point in time. But you know what I mean? It's like having to, I'm not gonna say to wait because we had a lot of a lot of an amazing, uh, we had a lot of amazing games. They were so amazing, you know that I I even couldn't find the right words to to describe it. Yeah, I I mean, last last thing I you know we said you know tenth uh, place would would have been Svezda uh, with 17 wins. Uh, Anadula FS also had 17, and then you had two teams uh, at 12 and 13 who were at 15. You know, so you know that would have been, you know, at least the penultimate game of the round of the season. They would have still been in the race. Those uh, those those two teams with 15 wins. So, I think it's a great move. I think it's a great move. Listen, of course it is. I, I'm I'm with you all the way here, like 100. percent And you know what? Yeah, some might not be happy for it because they said we worked our asses all year long, right? Trying to get that win, that, you know, 
went number 21, 22. But you know what? If you were good enough to get those 21 wins, right? And then you should you should still be good enough to win teams that finished beneath you. Maybe it it's a bad matchup for you and it's gonna make you work harder. But you know, we're not complaining because we're fans of the game and we're not really having to play on the court. <laughs> so for me, it's a win-win to have more games. Uh, have and more obviously games that mean something. Have more Yeah, games of course. It's I, yeah. You know, I, I I think it's it's a problematic term saying games that mean something because at the end of the day, even if you faced Alba and you were Jalgiris last year in the final game and you lost, that would have had could have had devastating you know effect on you. If you were Fenner and you kind of you know and you dropped the ball in one of the last games of the season and didn't get a win or you know I actually think they lost to Zvezda. Uh, they did. Uh, but, well, you know my point. Uh, to me, games really did matter. Didn't, because you could have been anywhere from last year, from 6th to to nine, right? From 6th to nine, um in the table. And one loss could put you, if you were 6th, the number 8, the number 8 could have been outside. It, it was this crazy. So, again, to me, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it, it gives you more games that mean something. Because all games, to me, meant something. Uh, it just, it has uh, so much of an added value. Because you know what? As much as players can say, you know, we worked hard so for so long to get to the point of where we are, we are at. You can also say, okay, now I know that I can drop the ball, maybe even have a better spread, and I could still make it from number seven, right? It's all a matter of, of perspective, but for the fans, come on. It's, it's not just for the fans, actually, for the teams. For it's us. like you said. For us, yeah, for everyone. It has added value. Kudos EuroLeague. That was really a, a great thing. And you know what? Perhaps a, the biggest story that went under the radar – or not talked enough during the summer, and and I'm glad that you brought it up. I really am, and I take my hat off for you as well. I just did <laughs> for those listening on. Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, the show, as we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we're going back lights on, meaning you're gonna be able to see us again, uh, not just in the final four live broadcast, uh, but also before, and you can also you know. Catch us on uh, Spotify and, uh, you know, essentially wherever you get good podcasts. Um, and, you know, Dave, you know what we didn't talk about, like, at all? You're going to tell me. The rosters. It's time right. to expose them. Yeah, right? right. Let's do it. <laughs> so we're not going to play our year, uh, yearly game of how or not, right, in terms of who we think make it to the Final Four because, come on. Let's make it uh, a bit more interesting, shall we? So the way it's going to go, we're going to go alphabetically. According to the EuroLeague website, we just mean, which means, as you can see, teams from left to right in alphabetical order, which means we're not. It, it's not going to be connected in any way possible to, uh, well, you know what I mean. I'll do it to where we is. think we're just doing be it located. alphabetically. Okay, you just want me to no, start. No preference on on who we think might win or anything. Yeah, exactly. No preference whatsoever. Yeah. So let's start. Let's begin with Alba Berlin. All right. Do you uh, want to go first? Yeah. I, okay. Let's do. Um, we're gonna do one sentence. We each get one sentence uh, on each team. So my sentence on Alba Berlin is: the team is in is has been renewed. And I don't know whether or not um, there are enough parts to compete as well as they have in the past, though they do have some good talent. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think it's going to be brutal. 
<laughs> it's going to be brutal. That's your sentence. All right. Next one is Anadula Atlas. No, no, Istanbul. no, no that's saying. not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's going to be brutal to begin with. They lost their core. There's no one sentence, my man. One sentence. I know it's one. You you did not specify regarding the length of the sentence. That's a you problem. Is a sentence. I'm, we're we're journalists, dude. Okay, it's going to okay, be brutal. Okay. Is a sentence. Long story short, Which they I lost their. <laughs> bro, they lost their core. Simple as. No sigma anymore. They lost all their top guys in terms of minutes. They're going to be interesting just in terms to see of how everything falls into place and how they're going to gel together. Do I see them more than that? Let's let time decide for us. Next team, please. One sentence. Your turn. And I do laugh at this. Just that. One sentence. Okay. Okay. Discipline, so, man. Discipline. Okay. I'll simplify it as much as I can. To me, it's a, it's a new project that was assembled upon um, an existing, you know, an, somewhat an existing roster. Um, they made good changes to the roster. But, but when you look at the 50-50 kind of ratio in terms of who continued and the, the new pieces that were brought with the coach that got, you know, that got former players from of a different uh, coach with a different vision they're going to be good they're going to need time nothing will surprise me not a crazy success or an okay season a promising another we can even say that another young promising coach takes over a major program and for me, it will be interesting to see uh, also how much he, how much the Turkish players contribute because he has had Turkish players contribute a lot in the past. Uh, but I I think the additions are super intriguing as far as what they can do. Bro, that's a paragraph. That's not a sentence. That's an extended sentence. All right. Yeah, yeah. AS Monaco, it's my turn. By the way, we will try to have some uh, brave guys apple juice next time. Uh, should we get the uh, funding? AS Monaco is my fine. Uh, good guard play got even better. And comma. And they've added very very uh very nice parts to a strong core that still exists if we were to play um the gm's game saying you can bring whoever you want most you know most uh sports directors or gms in the euro league would say Man, yeah but you don't have that in. money but you don't have that money so uh, i'll say uh Monaco, actually, they do have that money. And if last year we talked about their potential problems, right, in the shooting uh, perspective from the, in, in the front court, like they didn't have a guy to stretch the floor after they released uh, Adrian Mormont, right? And we talked about them being exposed in the point guard position because the year before, you know, in years prior to last year, they had a, a Leo Vesterman, they had Perry Slee. Um, so it was, you know, it was kind of different. So to me, they had a perfect summer. So I'll sum up Monaco in three words. The perfect summer. Basconia, Victoria, Gestais, your turn. One Yikes. sentence, please. One sentence. Nah, in, 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 not in a sentence, in a word. Yikes. Great. Okay. Um... Yeah. A team I was very divided on last season uh, got even more divisive. <laughs> no, no, actually... it's it's simple. Uh, look at who left. Look at who left. And so and look who came. And and so I I I really have um questions on what this team's gonna be able to do 
to me, the only question is because their offense, they were a very much uh, offensive oriented team. And you saw it. Either they smoked you or they lost, right? They had an amazing offensive talent and they lost that core of offensive talent. No Gidritis, no Darius Thompson. Awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to me, and I'm not I'm not saying yikes like in terms of y'all suck. No, I'm saying yikes because their losses were so huge that it is now the guys that are coming, they're gonna have to change their uh their system in a way. That's what I think. I think they will be exposed at the beginning, for the very least. Okay. Svens, uh, Svenis was the Meridian, uh, Meridian Bet Belgrade. Damn. Like, huh? Just damn, 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 damn. Okay, that is a roster. Turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. Go my for turn. it. My turn. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. This is a very impressive. Uh, this is a this is a uh, this is a very impressive roster, and who where? Sorry, this is a very impressive roster that is loaded pretty much everywhere. Can do everything, uh, very deep, and I just uh, I don't say wonder, I, I, but I think one thing that coach is going to have to do is is manage everybody with minutes and um, production. It's funny that you brought up coach and the previous team we talked about was Basconia. Do you remember the level of talent when he was coaching Basconia back then? I'm not saying previous years. I'm legit talking the beginning of the millennium, relatively speaking. I don't think that managing this roster would be a problem for him. Uh, however, I do believe that Zvezda will need to be a very healthy Zvezda. Um, they are crazy deep and their talent is just immense. It's immense. They can hurt you in so many ways. To me, they had a very good summer. Dare I say excellent one. And, um, I'm expecting them to uh you know to be loud this year very loud dropped some cash is another another thing we could have said your your turn uh es7 emporio armani milan wait they didn't they didn't drop cash come on your turn next next team they had armored trucks filled with cash milan, but speaking of milan, milan, yes milan next next sentence Oh, come on. Stop you with the sentence. Disciplined, my friend. Disciplined. Come on. S sentence on Milan. No, I'm I'm very disciplined. So, Milan. Um, I like them bringing Poitras, Alex Poitras. You know, I'm one of his one of his fans. Like I love his game. Um, I like them bringing Maudolo, but and here's the but. I think there's uh, an imbalance kind of thing going on there in terms of the level of talent they have on the backcourt in comparison to what they have and how deep they are in the frontcourt. I think it there is a lack of correlation there, right? I mean, they can hurt you in so many ways from, you know, with Miritich and Meli and Poitras and, and Voigtman. And they still have Heinz, and the, and they they got uh, uh, Kamagate. I mean, you have six guys who are ready to hurt you each night. But look at the at the talent that they've lost in the backcourt. They lost Napier, right? They lost Nazmi Trulong. And last year we talked about how small they were in the backcourt, and we were expecting to have a big guard. And they were very much dependent on Siobhan Shields. And what happened when he got injured? So their season to me will rise and fall on how uh, they're going to keep Shields doing what Shields does best. And I won't be surprised if they'll add another guy eventually to the backward. That is to me where they are kind of exposed in a way. And I, I think they are that guy short maybe of, for me, being... Um, 
top, top, top team. They are already a top team, but you know what I mean? It feels like they're kind of, kind of missing something maybe. Yeah, not going to totally disagree. Um, I, my sentence is Messina, Coach Messina has a strong roster that could be improved, but is, is still in my eyes uh experienced enough and uh and also deep enough to uh, uh to compensate for a couple of injuries and at least make the top 10 wait pangos and lo these are your two guys pangos is amazing don't get me wrong also oh, low but don't you think that they need a bit of uh, um, more reinforcement, whether it's firepower or size? I gave you my sentence, big man. <laughs> I think there I think Tino, I, I I watched Tino the entire World Cup, and I I think he's super underrated. Just for I'm example. not saying he's not underrated. I'm just saying World Cup is not Euro League season. He, did he have a bad With year all the respect. season last year? Did he have a no, bad? No, of course. Year so of course. So, next team, who do we have? Next team is FC Barcelona, and is uh, it's mine. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. This is another one that we have to say a new coach. So, uh, or coaching change. Um, uh, a former, a, a very successful former player. Uh, takes the reins of a club hugely uh, with huge expectations. And while they lost quite a bit, while they lost a bit, they they did gain uh, a couple of key parts. And some of the parts that they still have are are. That they the, a couple of the parts that they really needed last year are, are still there, and I think this is also a chance for some of the younger ish guys uh, to take a step up. Where it and and Grimo is somebody who uh, can do that. He's the early group. That's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. Um, as for like one sense. Didn't like the way things uh, unfolded with uh, Charis and them. I think they will surprise a few people. Um, they should be good. They should be good. Okay, FC Bayern Munich, your turn. Very surprising. Uh, very promising. Good roster moves. I anticipate them being, for the very least, a dark horse. For the very least. All right. Um, I think my sentence is going to be: This is a team. <clears throat> this is a team that will uh, will beat a lot of teams and will definitely be in contention for a direct qualifying spot. Maybe even enough for home court advantage in the playoffs. Fenerbahce, Beko, uh, Istanbul. Uh, They're good. Year, year two with Coach Atutis will be will be better than year one, uh, which was already pretty good, um, because they added some extremely good parts and. They already have, and they still kept a lot of key pieces. Like I said, they're good to me. They are maybe in a way more versatile uh, than last year. Maybe, maybe less athletic, but they should be more than good. Uh, our next team is Villarban. Shall I say it or should, should you? Your turn. 
Oh, man. Brutal. This is going to be brutal. They made okay moves. Um, I'm not expecting them to, uh, you know, they're going to be the ones who spoil the, the celebrations for some teams. Yeah, I'm a big Paris Lee fan, but I don't think it's going to be enough. <laughs> um, no, I yeah, I I agree actually with with everything you said. That's my sentence. <laughs> so Maccabi, Maccabi, Patik, uh, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv. Yep. Um, they had eight players uh, coming back for this year's project. Uh, they made a few changes. My turn. My yeah, turn. no, I'm 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 giving you. I the know. Heads up. I, I know. And go I for know. it. Give I us know. your sentence. Um. A Be lot great. of their, uh, I love their backcourt last year, and I've always been a huge fan of Yasiel Rivero, and I think that my my one my one sort of question or or whatever is whether or not they're deep enough to handle such a long and grueling season that maybe injuries could have a big impact on this team. I mean, that's a legit wonder. Like, you know, that's a legit question. Um, to me, the fact that they they almost, you know, comparing to last, to, to previous years, they almost made no changes. Like, you know, for Maccabi to continue with eight guys is amazing. Uh, and the key word here for Maccabi was fit, like, you know, about players fitting into a system. And, um, so to me, their starting point is, is great. I expect them to, uh, to do good things this year. Olympiacos Pareos, your turn. Uh, they brought in you guys, they lost guys, um, I think they are perhaps a weaker version of last year. At the same time, them bringing uh, Brasdakis in the last moment, a men signing for them. They'll struggle a bit more than, and it's strange to say it, you know, but they'll struggle more than last year. They're still a good team. Um, just not as last team because they lost the EuroLeague MVP. You know, you know it's there's no covering that up. The loss of the aforementioned Euro League MVP will hurt. Uh, bringing in a guy like Sigma uh, gives them some of that same versatility, and uh, it's still a dang tough team, big team all around, um, and veteran leaders. So. Panathinaikos, uh, Panathinaikos Athens, <clears throat> new project, uh, which is going to be fascinating to watch. And as you mentioned earlier, I think the thing is time, and and it's really, really, I guess, really just a, um, a question of how much patient everybody outside of the team is willing to give, because there's enough talent here to win the whole thing patience is key that's it that's a nice short Please. sentence partisan mozart bet belgrade coach zock they'll talk strong but right now they need to make a few uh maybe a couple additions to be as good as last year i think they lost something very important i cannot exclude you know a coach zock team i, I cannot but they are, on paper, starting point, not at the same place. Totally agree. Uh, I, I, I think the parts they lost are uh, are not compensated enough by the parts they brought in. And you would imagine that they'll probably try to have to bring somebody else in at some point. And I think it's just, you know, he's going to need a couple of, a few weeks, whatever, to figure out exactly what he wants. Real Madrid, uh, the champions, and in my eyes, didn't get really a lot weaker. 
um, even though they lost some key players, because the addition of a guy like Campasso uh, compensates for one of the problems they did have last year, and all those guys are back, and the old guys, if everybody's healthy, will not be as needed all season. Age over time, my only concern. I think they are not deep enough in terms of the 13th, 14th, and 15th guy. That's it. They are deeper, I think, talent-wise, though, than the Cup. Um, so, Valencia basket, is that mine? Yeah, it's mine. Uh, man. Just, I don't really have a lot of words for for Valencia. Um, I, yeah, I, I'll let you just, um, I'll let you say it first. I'm, I'm just gonna say that um, under two minutes of sentences. Um, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I'll make it in one. Uh, interesting changes. Prove me wrong. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Uh, Virtus Sigfredo, uh, Bologna, the penultimate team, your turn. Very simple. Uh, a lot of good moves. Backcourt has a problem. You cannot have Daniel Hackett as your only point guard uh, or true point guard to, to that extent. At his age, throughout a full season like that, that's not fair. I don't think the I don't think the coaching change will have as much impact as as people may think. Um, also, you you said that uh, the the question mark as far as point guards go. I think we can uh, agree on that. So, Gary's count us. Um, I will say losing Bratzikas hurts them. The money gives them some freedom to get players that once they figure out exactly what they need will be very beneficial. And having a healthy Keenan Evans will be key. Uh, great roster continuity. Um, losing Brasdiki is bigger than people may think. In a lot of ways. Um, that's all I'm going to say. They need to replace that somehow. And as long as they won't, to me, they are much weaker than last year because they need something big. Yeah. So we did it. We did it. Those yeah. are the eighteen teams. Eighteen. Hopefully, teams. hopefully you uh you thought your your we, hopefully we you thought we gave your team proper justice. Yeah, I'm not sure that all are going to be uh thinking exactly that. What I will say is this: it was very impressive. We managed to do it under four minutes. Who knows how we did it, but we kind of did. Well, if... some of us know what a sentence is, and some of us. Even yeah. it's a longer sentence using comma. I am not. I am not going to uh, to address that. Um, yes, but I think it's. I think it's uh, going to be. You know, there's a lot of uh, really interesting teams, and I think it's going to be a great season. Yeah, you know? I think it. It has been sort of a fair assessment, and we gave you that to to all teams right now. Um, and honestly, to those who we we said we thought they were lacking something, if in terms of the immediate future, like as of now, the present, uh, or five, six games in, or it's, you know, during the season, you can still fix that. You know what I mean? If teams will see that they are not deep enough, they will make a roster addition. There also not- will be at least at least one or two guys, maybe total, that get hurt. Maybe. And let me take this... Um, I'll say this with what we heard so far from Partizan and Anadolu FS, probably at least three more signings. That's what they hope before the season begins. Like, you know, and and I believe me, I think there'll there will be more, regardless before of before the hurt. season begins, even. Yeah, yeah. Does it before start in a few yeah, in sure. a couple of days? Yeah. I so know. um hope you enjoyed the first episode of the season. Make sure you uh you hit that subscribe button. Uh, and yes, we are. Um, this season will be hosted on uh, Bond Europe's YouTube account and the EuroLeague Sweet 16 
Spotify account. So make sure you follow us on each and every one of them. Also, uh, Euroleague like Sweet 16 show on, uh, uh, obviously, Twitter. And, um, yeah, Dave, I guess this is pretty much it, isn't it? We are ready. We question is all the teams. Everything's been said. Nothing else needs to be addressed. So I'm ready. You're ready. We know that Ari, Samet, Lou, all the guys are ready. Question is, are you? Till next time. Great pass from Diamantidis. The lob is done. We go. Forty minutes to a title. David Blue for three. On the mark, David Blue. Aspinelas drives inside. Look for the alley oh! Corey Higgins just exploding. Euroleague Sweet 16. Exactly what you need.